Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Once again, guys, this is, a, this is the Prince of Investment with your host, Prince Dykes. Coming to you guys all the way live from the beautiful state of Honolulu, Hawaii, via Denver, Colorado. So as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So this video, we're going to talk about water reads and how do they work. Slate your answer in the description box. But for the people that are catching this for on the, the playback, the podcast, all that's catching this live right now, um, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share button. Drop some comments if you got questions below and all the other great stuff. But the thing about it, we're going to talk about what are REITs and how do they work with me, your host. So what are REITs? REITs are, is an acronym for Real Estate Investment Trust. It was created in the 60s to give ordinary people an opportunity to be able to invest into real estate. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you today that, hey, I'm the best real estate person in the world. I know every single thing about REITs. But the thing about it, what I'm going to do in this episode is we're going to talk about what are REITs, what are some of the advantages, the disadvantages, how to be able to get involved with them, a general understanding of how they work, and I may do something a little bit more detailed later on. So what are REITs? REITs are real estate investment trusts, right? We all know what real estate is. You know, these are things like houses, land, apartments, you know, all type, you know, industrial, all type of ways of real estate. But to the average everyday person to, to be able to accomplish, not to accomplish, to be able to get involved with real estate, you have to have a good credit score. You may have to put some money down, all type of things you may have to do. It's, now, I'm, going, I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to unwrap the, the ravelings of all the different ways you can get involved with real estate, how much money you need and with no money and things like that. What we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the simple ways for you to um, get involved into real estate. So this was created in the 60s just for people to have the opportunity to be able to, uh, to, be able to profit from real estate. So essentially what a real estate, uh, a REITs are, you can purchase them from, where well, you can purchase them from, you can purchase them from places like brokers, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Scott Trade, things like that. Those are the places you can uh, purchase them from. You purchase them just like a stock. They are essentially, they have the formulation of almost like a mutual fund, not like a mutual fund, but they're a bucket. Inside of that bucket, they may go out and say, hey, we want to raise money. They IPO. They are initial public offering. They raise money. So when you purchase the stock or you purchase the REIT, you're turning your money over to a group of investors. Those group of investors, depending on what type of REIT it is, they may go out and buy houses. Or, and, live, you know, they may go out and buy houses or they may buy particular mortgages. And with those, you know, there's other ways to do it, too, but I'm just giving you a prime example of two ways, houses or mortgage. And, you know, when you pay your mortgage, when you pay your mortgage, you pay interest on your mortgage, right? So REITs can be set up that way to where they capitalize off someone paying their particular mortgage. On the other end, with, uh, with what REITs do is they go out and do the traditional way. They go out and get an apartment or a house and they rent it out. And when people pay their rent, that creates cash flow back into the REITs. So the thing about the SEC, they're regulated by the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission. And what the Security Exchange Commission does is they require that 90% of the holders inside of a REIT must be inside of real estate, right? So what it does is it goes out, it takes the money, it buys things, buys all type of real estate, houses, or whatever the case may be. A lot of them are set up different. You have to read and, you know, I'm not telling you, Every one of them is the exact same way, but they go out, they purchase particular uh, homes, and when they purchase homes, just like anybody else who pays their mortgage or who pays their uh, rent, the money is fed back into the funds, and when the, when the money is put inside of the funds, the money is distributed back out to the shareholders. Almost kind of like the concept of a, almost like a real estate group. The thing, now let's go with some of the advantages of a REIT. Uh, uh, read right. The thing about it is, some reads go for 30, 40, 50, 100 bucks per share, right? So, someone who only has 30, 40, 50, 100 bucks a share, they can now take advantage of a read. So, an average everyday person actually has the opportunity and chance to be able to be involved with the read, like someone who's listening to this now. And also, it's a great way to diversify your portfolio 
without having to make a big, you know, commitment on purchase. We all know most mortgages are 15 years, 30 year mortgages, right? So you don't have to make that big of a commitment. And if you want to uh, diversify your portfolio, you want to add real estate to your uh, portfolio, instead of going out having to buy a piece of land or property or whatnot, you can um, look into something called REITs. I hope I'm saying this right, a real estate investment trust. So it's a simple way that you can get involved. That's the advantage. One of the disadvantages, one of the major disadvantages that I see with uh, REITs, they don't gain the value that traditional real estate earns. For prime example, um, I lived in Hawaii for a couple of years. You know, you're talking about a housing market that's just, you know, uh, going up, 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 up over the last three years. I can, I definitely know I can speak of. And with that being said is if you bought a house, let's say for $400,000, in uh, Hawaii three years ago, and you just held on to it, and you can sell it for five or six hundred, you know, a few years later, right? Most, and you know, you're making twenty five, uh, not twenty five percent, but you're making a hundred thousand dollars off a of four hundred thousand dollar investment that you didn't even put up. You just made the commitment for it and walked away with, you know, a nice uh, piece of money, right? The things with real estate investment trust. They usually don't grow like that. You know, you don't really, I don't see that I know of, that I see, I don't see too many real estate investment trusts just doubling and tripling and quadrupling over themselves. It may be some out there, but they have a, they, they typically move like a stock. So when they move like a stock, so if someone who goes out here, who has good credit, who has the income, who can afford it, and who has the know-how, they may go out, they may rent a property, right? They may buy a particular property, then rent it out, Right, they uh, they may buy a piece of property, rent it out. The property may cost them four hundred thousand dollars. You know they're not paying it. They didn't. They may have to put some money down. They didn't put some money down. They can turn around and sell the property for five six hundred thousand dollars a year or two later, and you know their profit is going in a hundred two hundred thousand dollars off of just you know making a commitment, taking the risk of making the commitment to be able to pay that. The thing about it is, with real estate investment trusts, you don't see them move like that. They typically move, typically move like the stock market. Now, let's go back to the advantage side of the house. Earlier, I spoke about one of the advantages that anybody, uh, not any anybody, but a lot of people have access to a real estate investment trust. And with that being said, because it's so cheap to get into, right? It's almost like buying a purchase on stock. So. The other positive side is that is that most REITs pay a nice dividend. And what I mean by paying a nice dividend, their dividends are usually some they can run anywhere between three to four to five percent, right? And it's a very easy way to diversify your portfolio. That's why, you know, uh, that's why the advantages, but the disadvantages is if you think you're just gonna grab it and it's gonna re replace it doesn't replace traditional um, real estate investment trusts, right? Now, the other thing about it is, yes, you can go out and start your own real estate group, but the thing about it is that it's regulated by the SEC. What I mean by it's regulated by the SEC, the SEC requires that they hold uh, certain amounts of funds inside of a, you know, they must hold a certain amount of funds, or the funds must be in some type of real estate, right? So they're regulated. Every quarter they must put in quarterly reports. So now another way, like I spoke on earlier, I have a detailed video on the Investor Show um, YouTube channel where it has a step-by-step -step video on how to find REITs with E-Trade and TD Ameritrade. Those are like the top two brokers that people utilize. So I have a step-by-step -step video. It's not as simple to find them, but I have a video to help you use filters <coughs> on TD Ameritrade to help you add real estate into your particular portfolio. Now, one of the reasons why I say that um, adding real estate is a good thing and something that I'm currently exploring the option of doing, getting more involved into real estate, is that it diversifies your portfolio. Like we always speak about, we always speak about having so much money in equities, so much money in bonds, so much money into real estate. So these are ways you spread your money out depending on how the, the market may move and how things may go. So. That's one of the great ways to easily diversify your portfolio and to get involved with REITs and how you can purchase them. Now, also with that, other, another simple way, if you're someone who doesn't have an E-Trade or Scott Trade account, or not Scott Trade because I know TD Ameritrade purchased them, but an E-Trade account, 
one of the ways you can listen to Donnie Reed is, um, you know, uh, one of the ways you can listen to Donnie Reed is you can get inside of a read and uh, not one of the ways I'm kind of lost my little chance out there, but the one one of the, uh, one of the good ways of actually utilizing a read to your advantage is it's a great way that you can something you can look into or uh, an easy way for kids to start out and to get a little taste of real estate. So if you have a five two nine not a five two nine plan, but a a brokerage account for your child that you opened up and you want to kind of give them a little dabble of taste in real estate, this is the way to do it. They also pay nice dividends. Now, one of the disadvantages I just thought of that I forgot to mention earlier is that REITs usually pay a nice little dividend, you know, talking 3 or 5% dividend because they're collecting money from their tenants paying or they're collecting interest off the mortgages. That money is thrown into your account. At the end of the year, Uncle Sam is going to want a piece. That's just how it goes, right? So you can end up paying taxes on money that you probably didn't even utilize. So depending on your taxes, depending on the way you're set up in taxes, it could increase your tax liability because of the dividends that you're collecting out of the REIT. Even if you have those dividends reinvested, those dividends are still being reported and you still are accountable to pay taxes on them. So... That's another, some people consider that as a disadvantage, depending on your tax situation, depending on your, depending on your tax bracket, all that type of good stuff. So those are things you must consider when you are looking to purchase a, uh, a real estate investment trust. I will advise you to do your own particular research to learn more uh, about a uh, real estate investment trust. And what I lost my train of thought on earlier, I was trying to, I was speaking about if you don't have TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, or Scott Trade account, one way you still can look into REITs is you can just Google. Like, Google, just use the word Google, REIT uh, stock numbers, not numbers, but REIT stock symbols. And those symbols will return you um, particular, those symbols will return you particular investments that you can go off, uh, symbols that you can look up and do your own research and look inside of uh, REITs. All REITs are not the same. Some REITs have different objectives. There are equity REITs, there are mortgage REITs, and there's another type that I can't even remember REITs. So look inside of them um, to find out more about them. But it's an easy way and a great way to add uh, real estate to your portfolio without the traditional way, uh, a non-traditional way to add real estate to your portfolio. Also, it's very cheap and inexpensive to get into, and it doesn't require commitment because it pretty much trades like a stock. So I hope that helped you guys. You know, we, we talked about what are REITs, how to purchase them. We talked about some of the advantages. We talked about some of the disadvantages. We we, we uh, briefly spoke about how they worked, the different type of the different types they are, who they're regulated for, why they were created, why they why they were created is very important uh, to me. I always like to see why is this here, why you know is this you know a thing. And, you know, from, from what I read in research, it was created in the 60s to give people a, uh, a chance with real estate investment trusts. And here it is in 2018. I don't know too many people even brought up real estate investment trusts. So look inside of that. That's a quick and easy way to add real estate to your portfolio. So um, as always, guys, stay tuned here. Um, next week, we'll be coming in live all the way from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, we'll be uh, airing, um, airing there and showing some stuff here on Think Tech Hawaii at the great Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway 2018 meeting. If you haven't seen the coverage of the 2017 meeting, please stop and take the chance to go look at the seven-minute documentary because I will be making another one this year. So as always, my name is Prince Dykes. I'm not going to be too, uh, here for too long. My name is Prince Dykes. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this video will help you. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Until the next podcast, cartoon, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.